When Steel Talks, everybody listens. Nigeria is in such an incredible place because we have dynamic cultural programming. And tonight, our program is brought to us by none other than the Trinidad and Tobago Folk Arts Institute and Mr. Les Slater. We, he's been a comrade for quite some time, and we've done some outstanding programs together. And this is just another one in the, in the long chain. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Les. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Miles. Um, we, I was just talking a little bit earlier about when we first started doing stuff with Ben Gabbers years ago, because the Folk Arts Institute got going at the start of the 90s. And um, I have vivid memories of coming to Medgar and security saying, well, we don't know you're coming here, so you're going in, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So uh, since those days of that kind of um, disconnection and, and, and right hand doesn't know what left hand is doing, um, things have smoothed out so wonderfully, and it's all because of Miles McAfee. And we owe him really a, a, a tremendous debt of gratitude. We, um, first thing I, say, I think I should say is that I hope there's no one still here, or no, no one here, who still has the misapprehension that Sparrow is going to be here. <laughs> performing or something like that, you know. And we, we answered this question a million times because people, in spite of you putting out, uh, you know, press release and so on and so forth, some people even said, I remember one caller said, I heard there's a, an 80th birthday celebration for Sparrow. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, but if, in, in case anyone's still here, anyone here is still of that, um, uh, mistaken impression, no Sparrow is not here, not expected to be here. He had told us that if he was in the country, he would like to be here, uh, but he, I don't think, is in the country right now. I think he's yeah, probably still in for that, maybe getting another two million, who knows? <laughs> so, um, but we thought uh, the fact that he had uh, gotten to age 80 was a nice marker for us to you know, Use as the vehicle for taking a look at the really remarkable career that this guy has had. And so the title is just like that, Sparrow Turned In. Um, of course, it hints at the fact that for decade after decade after decade after this guy came on the scene back in the 50s, Sparrow was the perennial young boy, the headquarters for testosterone and all this kind of stuff, you know, you know. So the idea that this guy could be 80 years old, this didn't seem to register or connect with a whole lot of people. And we thought this was maybe one way of dealing with it in a realistic way. He is indeed 80 years old. And so, so we wanted to have a look at his career. Um, just a little while ago, I asked our impromptu tech guy, who is um, Chris Muley from City Law, who happens to be here and was interested in, in this program and, and came by and has been helping us with the tech stuff while James, the, the MedGavers guy, was busy doing a million things. He says he's the only guy here and he's been torn in a whole lot of different directions. So, um, Chris, um, Thank you for pitching in and helping us uh, with this stuff. Yes. But I asked Chris a little while ago to just play the first cut of a special selection of, of Sparrow material that we put together, which opens with his winning that um, crown in 1956. And at the start of it, you hear a fanfare, and I don't know if people who are familiar with Cook records remember all of that, but there's a fanfare, and I'm wondering, I wonder if Emery Cook, who is, which is the guy who was behind Cook Brick Records, and they made that wonderful um, 1956 album called Jump Up Carnival, which has the 
steel band thing in it with the guy saying Zambe and all that stuff. The older folks, I mean you young people wouldn't know about that, but the older folks know about that. I mean, a whole lot of people they claim to being the, the, the fellow who Zambe was calling and all that nonsense. But that record is really an iconic one in the in the in Trinidad and Tobago folk culture history. And one of the first people that we honored in the Folk Arts Institute was Emery Cook. Emery Cook was an American gentleman who, you know, had an interest in, in folk culture in, in Trinidad and other places. And he came down to Trinidad, he established a recording uh, plant down there uh, in the 50s. And he um, did some really wonderful work. So what I would have liked to have asked Emery Cook, he's no longer with us, but what I would have liked to ask him is when you put that album together in 1956, and just before Sparrow sings Gene and Dinah, you have this fanfare. I'm wondering if you knew what you were signaling, that this guy was going to be the dominant Calypso figure that we have had all these years. And I'm sorry I didn't, I did go up to Connecticut. He didn't come to the event when we honored him. He was by then almost 18 years old himself. And so he, I went up there to present him the award and to talk, interview him. And uh, I wish I knew, what the, I, I thought of the, the record at that time, and that, so I could ask him, what got into your head to introduce Sparrow on that record with a fanfare? Because it, it, it looks now to be so uh, prophetic that he would have done so. And so tonight uh, we want to uh, look back on Sparrow's career and we have four guys who are going to be helping us to do that. Um, we would start the ball rolling with a fellow who is, um, we designate him, uh, Calypso researcher and preservationist, and you, you still don't want us to know what the real profession is, right? Yeah. <laughs> the professional guy, but for some reason, he says his thing is Kaiso and Pam, so he wants that to be out front. But this is a guy who I, have, I only met him today for the first time, but I knew of him for quite a while. And I know of the interest that he has had in this particular <coughs> culture. So without further ado, uh, and I want to introduce a gentleman who is going to simply talk about growing up with Sparrow. This is Khalid Hugh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. 